In the next few videos, I will look at equipping you to be able to build real life applications. For this to happen, we need to look at saving data of our applications somewhere online and centralized. We need apps where several users at once change and see data from the same database, but on different mobile devices. We need a mobile backend as a service. So what is a mobile backend as a service? It's a model for providing web app and mobile app developers with a way to link their applications to backend cloud storage and APIs exposed by backend applications while also providing features such as user management, push notifications and integration with social uh, networking services. Providing a consistent way to manage backend data means that developers do not need to redevelop their own backend for each of the services that their apps need to access, potentially saving both time and money. It specifically addresses the cloud computing needs of web and mobile app developers by providing a unified means of connecting their apps to cloud services. And if you look at backendless.com platform backend as a service, uh, you can see they describe their backend as a service as a highly scalable backend for your mobile and web apps. Backendless mobile backend as a service is a complete backend with support for user authentication, data persistence, file storage, messaging, and custom business logic. Everything you need to build awesome apps without worrying about servers. So if we can say this in, in normal English, if you look at this picture, we've got a space where we've got database and database management, user authentication and management, push notifications, geolocation, file storage, and much, much more in one centralized place. Now, these guys from Black Endless have created this for us automatically. They've already created it. They've built the APIs. They've built the uh, software development kits for every platform. It includes Android, iOS, JavaScript, PHP, .NET, everything built in APIs and then for all of those uh, a software development kit. So what we've got here is a place online where we can store our data but where we can have our PC, our laptop, our tablet, our phone all connect to the same database, this backend as a service. So now let's just go through the, the backendless website and see what they offer. So the first thing that we're going to quickly have a look at is the pricing. So if you go to Backendless Cloud to go to their pricing structure uh, and you scroll down a bit, you can see that they've got four different plans that you can choose from. And this changes a lot. So uh, I'm not sure by the time that you watch this video that it, it could change already. But uh, you, they've got a free plan. They've got a developer plan, Cloud9 and Cloud99. And this one is has got a free trial for you as well. Uh, so you can you can check out the the free trial first before uh, you go to the, the free plan or you decide to to buy one of the other um, options or the pricing options that you can get. So uh, they recently changed this now and uh, it's now when I'm doing this video it's it's uh, July 18 and uh, 2018 and they've changed the API calls to a calls per month instead instead of per minute. So they had it as 60 calls per minute and now it changed. To 1 million per month so if you take the 60 api calls per minute uh, and convert that to to monthly this 1 million is, is 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 more than half of what you had but in in this case uh, I, I think for for beginner developers that would, this would be fine uh, just to check out their free plan uh, if you go to the developer plan 5 million that's now two times more as it was with the 60 API calls per minute. So uh, this one is quite nice. And then depending on your specific app and how many API calls you'll need, you can decide on which one of these pricing options you need to take. Okay, so they've also now with Backendless 5, I think it came out now at the end of June, uh, they've, they've got real-time connections now, so you can have 100 real-time connections without paying anything. Uh, five real-time uh, listeners per month, uh, I think it's per month. No, sorry, this will be for the app and for, for the real-time at, at any given stage. Then uh, development team size is unlimited for all of the options. There's custom security roles, there's data tables. The data tables on the free plan is a bit limited. Uh, but if you if you pay your fifteen dollar per month, uh, then you'll get your your twenty tables. Uh, the objects in a table also could be restricted. A thousand could be a, 
uh, maybe not enough. Uh, but if you go to the next plan, you've got 20,000 objects that you can save in a table. You've got 400 geo points. You've got geo fences. You've got file storage of a gig if you want more. There's options, uh, objects in cache, uh, push mes messages, uh, notifications, and so forth. So you can look at what you get free uh, in this first plan. So the free plan is a quite nice plan to start off with and to get your app to a stage where you can go and then buy one of the other options. So uh, in this uh, course or in this video course that I'm doing with Backendless, I will focus on only on the free plan and everything we'll do will be covered by the free plan. So now if you go down a bit, let's say you, you decide to take one of the three last options where you actually pay something. So if you pay, let's say $15 a month and you find that your 20 data tables is not enough, then you can go and let's say buy yourself an additional 50 data tables, which will add $25 per month. And that will then go to $40 per month. But then you'll have this 20 plus the additional 50, which will give you 70 tables. So as soon as you start paying, you can see that limits can be increased, not in the free plan, but in any of the other plans. And increasing those limits, for example, you can include uh, 200 data, 200,000 data objects by just adding a $10 per month if your data objects in the table is not enough for you. Right, and that's basically it then for the pricing structure. So I think the free plan is more than enough. If you go then to the support part there, you can see that there's a support forum, there's a Slack channel, and there's some video tutorials. Uh, I would really recommend that you go and ask questions in the support forum or in the Slack channel. The Slack channel is uh, like instant messaging where you can directly talk to somebody from Black Back Endless. Also the support forum, they are very fast. They never take longer than a day to answer your question, uh, sometimes even in a few minutes. So the support is really good, support forum and the Slack channel. So please make use of that. Uh, then you can see that there's the, the platforms. Uh, they've just released back in list five in uh, June, late June uh, 2018 and uh, uh, the previous version back in this four. They've also got a service called code list that we will look at where you can basically build your apps without using code, but then uh, create some APIs uh, that you can actually use your codeless programming inside of your app, which is quite nice. So there's some codeless introduction and videos and uh, how you can how you can do stuff with codeless. Uh, it, it's quite a nice service where you basically drag and drop blocks of code and that gets uh, that that will do some of back end features for you. So now if we go to the, the documentation and we go to the API documentation, you can see there's documentation for uh, Android, Java, iOS, JavaScript, biz, custom business logic, there's the REST API, there's for .NET, uh, and so forth. So they support a lot of uh, platforms that you can use. So if you're developing for mobile, then you've got basically everything you need. It's Android, Java, and iOS. And then if you go into API documentation, you can see this is now for version five. That's the newest version, but it's also backwards compatible. If you go into back endless and you look at this one, you can see that they ask you there at the top also, uh, go to the Slack channel and tell us if, if we need to improve um, this documentation. In the documentation, you can see there's a quick start guide, there's a client side setup, there's migration from three to five. There's some error handling. You can look at the user service uh, where we log in new users and so forth. It's like a, a textbook for you to, or tutorials to, to show you how to do the code and what's all the errors and stuff like that. Uh, for instance, in the user service API, if you want to see how to log in a new user, they've got the calls there. If you want to log out to user, they've got the calls there. Uh, there's the data service API where we just save new objects to a database or to a table. Um, you can see that they you can update, you can save data, you can delete uh, basic object retrieval and so forth and some more advanced stuff. Also, the new real-time database, real-time messaging, the push notifications, if you want to get into that, we'll do that still. Uh, there's files API if you want to save files online. Uh, there's geolocation, uh, logging, caching and so forth. So uh, this will really be your go-to documentation for Backendless. Uh, there's also a way to download this as, as PDF. I'm not sure where now, but you can also download this as PDF. 
then if you go into the quick start guides you can see that they give you some first steps for for android and for java uh, that you can do and follow these steps to get your application up and running but we will do uh, this first initial steps when we get to the next video right and then you also get the sdks if you want to download the sdk and include that into your libraries folder in android studio then you can do it from here from any one of these um, repositories and how to set up your environment uh, also there's some videos that you can run through uh, there's some api explanations and some f and so forth right so i think before we can carry on to the next video we need to log in or not to log in to register a new account with back endless and make sure that you've got an account that we can work with so you're going to go to uh, the register button there or go to develop.backendless.com so here you'll enter your first name your last name your email address and your password make sure you're not a robot and then you can register before you log in though they will send you an email so please do not log in uh, unless you already confirmed your email uh, address so you will receive an email address or an email notification that you have registered a new account and they need to con to confirm that it's you and then after clicking on confirm you may come and log in to back endless right so basically when you get to the screen after logging in for the first time it will ask you to give your application a name so i'm just going to give my application the name test app and i'm going to say create uh, okay that can only contain let me just remove the, the space there and say create and it creates your new application for you and now when you create a new application you can see that your billing plan starts off with cloud 99 which is the trial and i'm not sure how long this trial is is active maybe 10 days or so but you can use the cloud 99 now this is the dashboard where we are right at the start where you can change your app icon you can see your billing plan you can set your url for google play and for the apple play store here you will get your application id your ios key your android key and so forth you'll get here and but we'll get to this part uh, when we set it up in android studio now also because this is a dashboard you can see all your statistics of how many api calls per month you had you can see this one is i think and I'm not sure, 4 million or what. And then they, we've got pub sub messages, push messages, uh, the disk space, how much you've used so far, and so forth. So this is a, a dashboard which gives you some uh, analytics for the last six months, the year, uh, the current billing period, and so forth. Okay, so this is the home button to get back to your dashboard. You can see you can also reset your app, delete your app, or clone your app. Remember that you can, at any time, you can create as many apps for your account as possible as you want but billing is only for one specific app right so we're going to go to manage now if you go to the manage tab there you'll see that we've got some app settings which gives your api keys and stuff again there's social mobile email uh, you can set up your email if you want to send email from back endless there's domain control if you use your own custom domain uh, there's git there's your your teams so you can set your uh, your team members there uh, invite a new team member remember you've got unlimited team members that you can add to work with you on this database then there's analytics you can look at your statistics api calls the number of users the messages uh, there's log management that you can have a look at there's billing so you can choose a new uh, plan here for developer or cloud nine or whatever and then you can also export your data you can import your data and then there's a new feature now that came out with back endless 5 the landing page where you can set up uh, your landing page for your app and your own custom domain or you can use a domain at back endless that will help you to create a, a web page where you can uh, promote your own app on a website okay so if you go to the users tab uh, you see that you can do user registration there so you can switch it on or off whether new users can be registered to your app uh, whether they require email confirmation or not uh, and so forth so we'll get back to these settings later on there's also a login section where you can enable multiple logins to your application when the sessions uh, should time out uh, to lock a user account and when to unlock it again there's some email templates we'll get back to the email templates also for example uh, when they first install your application you can send out an email and you can define how the email will look from here also if you want them to confirm uh, the email address like you you've done before you logged in here 
uh, you, if the user will requests a new password, you can also set up how your mail for that will look. But we'll come back to that. There's also some security roles, basic ones. Uh, you can create one new uh, security role here for the free plan. But this is basically for specific users. If it's an Android user, what data does the, does the person have uh, access to? So if, if it's data to create, to update, to find, to remove, whatever. If it's an Android user, it's got access to all of these. Right, so if we then go to the data tab on the left hand side, this is where all your tables for your database will lie. These, this section here is basically all your own created data tables. Uh, by using the plus there, I can create a new table. You can also do it in coding and then your tables will lie in this section. Your system data section here, this section does not count towards your five free data tables. So these tables are not part of it. But all the tables that you create in here, those tables cannot be more than five in your free plan. So you'll see there's your users table, your loggers, device registration, back endless counters, cache, and so forth. Uh, but these are held by by backenders itself. In the users table, you can actually include some more. For example, if I want to add a new if I go into schema there, I can create a new column in this specific table and save some data in it. But we'll get to that part later on. So in your data section is where you'll have all your data tables in your database. If you go to files, uh, this is where all your files will be. If you want to save some files online in your messaging, this is where you can send out push notifications to different channels. So you can create new channels here or encoding and you can send out notifications to your devices from here. We can also go to geolocation. In this section, this will basically be where you save your latitude and longitude, your points uh, on the map and you can see then on on this map also where those specific points are that you saved. We've got some business logic as well. We will later look at a code list a bit, but we'll get back to this one. Uh, let me just see if we go to code list now. Now we'll we'll do the code list one later on where we drag and drop some blocks and so forth. If we go to the marketplace, this is where you can add some, some extra things into your specific plan but this is not allowed in the free plan. So if you've got Cloud99 or whatever, you can add uh, some of these to it. Then there's code generation also, if you want to get a standalone template for let's say a real-time chat application or basic create, retrieve, update, delete demo, or uh, data classes or Java classes defined for data tables, uh, geo browser, registration and login or whatever. You can get the codes by a zip file and then open it up in Android Studio and everything is set up for you and ready to go. I would not recommend this unless you know what you're doing, but uh, for, for the start, uh, please just follow this video instead of taking one of these. This is basically it for this video. Uh, we'll come back on the next video and show you how to set up this now in your Android Studio for your specific application.